hey, welcome to my channel. Like, subscribe, do all the things. I'm just kidding. I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm so sorry for whatever happens when it comes to this video. Like even my dog's toys in the background. I'm chilling at my workspace. I just, here's the thing. So here's what I'm here for right now. I believe that there are a couple of subjects that no matter where you're at in your fitness journey, it can't hurt to learn. Um, so for me, I am four years out from a sleeve gastrectomy, which is a weight loss surgery. So I have lost 155 pounds. Um, I'm currently a lifestyle and fitness coach. You might have found me through that. Hi, hello. Um, if you're just perusing, great. Um, I have some tips today about going to the grocery store, which I think everybody can benefit from. So go ahead and give a listen, uh, give a like if you like it. Um, but I'm just going to jump right into it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm literally filming this on my photo booth on my MacBook. So don't judge. Here we go. So the first time that I ever went to the grocery store by myself and tried to make healthy choices, I was in college. Um, and I had no idea what I was freaking doing. So here are some tips and tricks that I wish someone had shared with me. Um, because I walked in and was just like, there's so many aisles and so many things and so many different brands and what does a new nutrition label help? Um, also a little backstory on me. I did just take a nutrition course with Ace Fitness. So I have a little more information in my brain than the average personal trainer. But, uh, first tip, first tip, no matter what you are going to the grocery store, do not go hungry. <laughs> I think it's so simple, but it's so true. If you go into the grocery store and you're hungry or you're in a bad mood or you're trying to be really quick, it never goes well. I always end up with like ice cream I didn't need or that bag of chips that's new by that brand that I don't actually want, but I just wanted to try because they're there and I'm hungry. So tip number one, don't go hungry. Tip number two, shop the perimeter of the store. When you think about a grocery store and how it's laid out, I will try to try to throw in a picture of a grocery store. Maybe here. <laughs> when you shop the grocery store, generally the perimeter of the store has your fruits and veggies, your meats, um, your dairy items, your the bakery, which like has all your breads. Those are all usually on the outside of the store if you pay attention. Uh, there are a couple exceptions for aisles that I would suggest you go down. Um, you know, there's a couple things on the frozen aisle that I think you could benefit from. Um, there's some stuff you know you're going to need in the baking aisle. Obviously, you're going to have to deviate from the outside of the store. But when you're planning your main list for when you need to go to the store, shop the perimeter. The last piece of like general advice that I have is uh, to make a plan. I know it's a pain in the butt, but it's the best thing that I do for myself during the week. I sit down every Sunday. Um, your grocery shopping day may be different. Sit down the day before you go and just plan what you think you're going to have during the week. Um, come up with some ideas for breakfast, lunch, um, plan your dinners just do it. It makes life so much easier. You're going to avoid buying things you don't need at the store uh, while you're kind of like, eh, I could use that. I'll fit it in. And then it just goes bad. Um, you're going to be less likely to buy in bulk. You're going to be less likely to impulse buy. <laughs> um, you're also going to stick to healthy choices. So go with the list. I could not I say it again go with the list. So let's just jump into it. I'm going to go in the direction that my grocery store goes. Um, yours might be a little different, but they're all generally laid out the same way. So first thing, produce. Also, I'm reading notes off the side. You see me like looking off. I'm not being awkward. Um, produce, best place to be in the store. Let's be real. That is where, uh, well, unless you are keto and you don't do carbs, but uh, yeah, girl loves carbs. So we're talking fruits, we're talking veggies, all the things. Um, something that's interesting to know about that section of the store is colors are super important. So colors indicate the nutrient values in a food. So if it's orange, it has vitamin A. If it um, 
you know, the variety of colors is so important. So when you're looking down at your grocery basket, just go like, okay, what do I have here? Do I have a green? Do I have an orange? Do I have a yellow? Like just the more the better. Um, and then just know that the more vibrant that fruit or vegetable is, the healthier it is for you. So that's something I learned from my nutrition course. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, also something to be mindful about is what is in season, uh, which I will try to throw a graphic right here. Hi, we're back. Um, so what's in season? If you are buying something that's not in season, you're most likely not getting the most nutrient dense food of that type. Um, basically you're not wasting your money, but you kind of are. Um, they have to go out of their way to like make fruits that aren't in season show up at the grocery store. So pay attention to what's in season. If you want something that's not in season, the frozen aisle is where it's at. Just know that they pick things at their prime, um, when it comes to fruits and vegetables and they put them straight into the freezer and then they go. So you're getting the most nutrient dense and there is no difference between the nutrients in a frozen food and a fresh food. So if you're also on a budget, super important, go for that frozen section. It is legit. Another random thing that comes up a lot with produce, um, organic has to do with the pesticides. It's all a thing, but there's some people that swear by the fact that like organic is the only way to go. You're not being healthy unless you buy organic. Organic is also $9 million more. And there are a couple of foods where it's important that you know that the pesticides are higher. So those um, foods are going to be your apples, your bell peppers, your blueberries, celery, cucumber, grapes, lettuce, nectarines, and peaches. Those. Oh, and then uh, spinach and strawberries. Also important. Um, those ones. That's my co-host here. Yeah, I'm just... We're just gonna keep going. So those ones are important because they do end up with a lot of pesticides on them. So if you are going to buy organic, those are the ones to buy organic. Um, lone pesticides would be asparagus, avocados, cabbage, cantaloupe, corn, eggplants. Don't worry about those things. Just you're good. Um, pineapples. I'm not gonna say that you're wasting your money if you go organic, but also like, I'm not gonna say it's necessary. Okay, so let's say you left the produce section and you're on your way to the breads. Bread. If I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, it would be bread, easily. Um, so with that, there are things you need to know about that bread and bakery section because that's where it tends to get people. So first thing, pay attention to the idea of having things in moderation because you don't want to waste and just go into empty calories. That's not going to get you anywhere. So um, keep in mind when you're walking through that section, like what is worth it to you? Um, I'm never one to say like, don't ever have a donut ever again because you're just going to think about the donut for the rest of your life. Have the donut, but have it in moderation. Don't have one every day. Um, so things that you're going to be paying attention to when you're in that bakery section. So let's say with bread. Um, just know that low fat on the little label on the outside doesn't always mean that it's high health. Um, it, they are very specific with labels trying to get you to come on in and see what you can find. Um, those are usually higher in sugar. So just know that um, we're watching out for trans fats and saturated fats. Those are the ones we're going to be like, ooh, stay away from. They're, they're in everything. You're not going to get away from them, but avoiding as much as possible are... Those are the ones that aren't great for you. Poly and uh, monounsaturated fats are good for you. So stay away from trans, stay away from saturated. That's going to be for all the things we talk about today. Fats are great. Not those fats. <laughs> Anyways, back to bread. So what you're going to be looking for with bread is whole grains. Let me say that again. Whole grains. They're heart healthy. They're high in fiber. Um, and a lot of things will try to trick you into like, 12 grain, blah, 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 blah. What you're looking for is on that bag, you're looking for 100% whole grain. Um, you're looking for, if you turn around the ingredient list, the first thing on there is going to be grain, some kind of whole grain. Um, that's how you know you're getting what you want. Uh, also, when looking at a bread, I look for at least two grams of fiber, just because fiber is important. Um, and yeah, just keep an eye on that first ingredient. Shouldn't be something you don't know how to pronounce. 
again, that's gonna be a rule for all the foods that we talk about today. Don't go for like. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, what, sir? What, what are you saying? Okay, great. Awesome. Cool. Like I said, also, that section is going to be where you find your donuts and your cookies and your cakes and all the things that look so good. Don't have them every day. It will not also kill you if you have one every six months. Probably gonna get a lot of crap in the comments for that, but I said it, so, whoops. We're moving. Now, we're in the meat section. Well, the deli slash meat section. We're just gonna wop up all together. So, particularly deli, I just wanna talk about uh, deli meats. Keep an eye on nitrates and nitrites in deli meat. Um, those are cancer causing. So we're gonna wanna avoid those. Uh, you hear it a lot when they're talking about like pregnant women wanna avoid um, the meats that have nitrates in them. That's why they uh, have been linked to cancer. So let's just avoid cancer. Yeah, yeah, great, awesome, perfect. Um, another thing that you're gonna wanna avoid, hot dogs. They're high fat, they're high in sodium. Another thing that's really high in fat and sodium is bacon. Who the fuck puts bacon though? I put bacon. I just get the low sodium version. So things to be aware of in that section. Uh, when it comes to the actual meat, you're gonna wanna pay attention to the fat content of a food, um, whether you're getting saturated fats, you want the health benefits of a meat that you're gonna pick up. So when you're looking for a beef, um, the leanest cut you can find is a round or a loin. Uh, speaking of lean meats, you're gonna go chicken, turkey, um, you're gonna go fish. Like those are your meats you should be going for. Meats, fish, same thing. Um, going for all the time versus um, your red meats. Obviously they're great. There are things in them like iron that you're not gonna get in something else, but um, having them all the time is not necessarily the smartest choice. So. Uh, can really mess with your cholesterol and things like that. So, lean meats, they're great. I'm a fan of chicken and shrimp. I could eat, again, the rest of my life. This is how you know that I used to be a fat girl. I start talking about food and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. hey, okay, back to food, sorry. Um, what you're gonna look for, let's say that um, you're looking at like a ground beef and it says, 90 10 what does that mean that's how much fat it is percentage wise um so what you're gonna look for is that higher number like as high as possible when you're looking for like a ground beef because you want the leanest version of the red meat Everyone a meat. I do like oh i do you ready for it guys um okay totally this is great i use this all the time and i trick my husband um, but when looking at ground beef, obviously, again, have it every once in a while, but you're way better off going with the ground turkey. Um, and if you're going to go for a chicken, go for like a breast meat or a turkey. Like breast meat is going to be your leanest cut. Um, anything that's a white meat, not a dark meat. Um, meat though, it contains iron, it contains B12, it can contain zinc, like it's great for you. Um, when you're buying fish, look for fish that's low in mercury. Mercury. I'm not even going to stop recording because those just take too much energy. But mercury. Um, another tip about fish, I'm allergic to fish, but I do know this. When you're looking for fish, look for a fish that does not smell. Like if you can smell the fish, that is a sign that is about a day too old. So just avoid it. Avoid like the plague. Otherwise you're just gonna be like, those taste gross. Ugh. All right, now we're gonna go dairy section. I'm also going to include eggs in the dairy section because it's generally where they are in the store, but they're not a dairy. It's confusing. Where do they actually fit? Let's be real. So talk about eggs first. Um, there's a lot of cholesterol in eggs, so there's been this argument about like, are eggs healthy? Are they not healthy? I'm a fan of them. I eat them every day. Um, they do have cholesterol in them, so it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, egg whites are obviously better than the entire egg, but they have omegas in them and protein and like, I'm a fan. You might not be. Uh, another thing to pay attention to in that section is when you're looking at milk, What's the fat content look in that milk? Because let's be real, we all want to go for the whole milk. It tastes infinitely better. It's not better for you though. So most people go for whole milk. Really, you should be going for a skim milk. Skim milk doesn't have the same taste at all. I'm not gonna pretend like it does. So you could just train yourself to go from 
whole milk to, you know, eventually 2%, 1%. Oh, you're on skin, then you didn't even notice. What? Woo! Uh, so just, no, skim is better for you. Uh, also, there are a lot of nut milks now uh, that are less high in fat, um, but there are a lot of nut allergies. I personally am allergic to nuts, so I can't have most of the nut milks. Um, but just know that almond milk, cashew milk, um, I am a fan of coconut milk, all great for you. Um, they each have their benefits, they each have their, you know, not so great aspects, but that's every single food. So, um, other things to note in dairy, cheeses, yellow cheeses. If you don't have a preference between like a white cheese or yellow cheese, know that yellow cheeses are higher in calories. I didn't know that. I was just like, well, all cheeses made equal. No, it's not. Go for the white cheese. Um, and then a harder cheese. So if you have like a squishier cheese or harder cheese, the harder cheese has more fat in it. So just avoid. Um, things to know in the dairy section, um, low fat in the dairy section is a good thing. So non-fat, low fat, if you're going for a yogurt and there's two different yogurts, they're the same thing. Go ahead and grab the low fat one. Um, it's going to be better for you. Also something to note when you're in the yogurt section, a lot of the same brands make two different versions where like one is 60 calories and one is 90 and there's no difference. So if it's not about taste for you, check the back of the label. Uh, and yogurts have a lot of added sugar, so just be careful with that. Um, added sugar, not so great for you. But Greek yogurt, on the other hand, um, we've kind of gotten obsessed with it as a country, uh, but Greek yogurt has more protein in it. So that is why people suggest Greek yogurt over regular yogurt. But a lot of companies have taken advantage of that and will throw like chocolate and pretzel chunks in your Greek yogurt. Not as healthy when you do that. Okay, so we've explored the outside of the store. Now what do we do? <laughs> so I suggested earlier, frozen aisle is not a bad thing, uh, especially when it comes to fruits and veggies. You get your bang for your buck up there. So go down, uh, check out TV dinners as well. Um, a lot of people like lean cuisine, all the things. The sodium content in those are insane. So when possible, avoid them. Uh, if you're going to go towards the sweets, towards the ice cream, towards the popsicles, whatever, look for your single serving sizes. You're less likely to take them all home and eat them all at the same time. Um, and one and done. Don't keep it in the house. I need to do that. I don't know about you. We've now added the musical stylings of my roommate. I don't know if you can hear him, but uh, production value over here. Anyways, inside all, it's at the store. You're going to have to go down that mental thing. Uh, canned vegetables, keep an eye on sodium because those get really intense. Uh, look for the low sodium version. Or, fun fact, you can get about 25% of the sodium off if you just wash them before you cook them. There's fun fact of the day. I guess these are lots of fun facts. Um, when you're looking at the front of a package for anything, the front of the label is how they mark it. You see, low in fat, low in sugar, blah, blah, blah check all the other ingredients because there's likely something they've done to substitute for that idea. Um, pay attention to serving size, pay attention to calories. And a little, in a second, we're going to go through labels and, you know, show you the difference. Um, percent daily value on the back of a label is for a 2000 calorie diet. So just keep that in mind. If you're less, if you're more, when you look at those little percentages on the side, they don't always add up to what you personally need. Um, when it comes to dietary fiber, try to get in like 25 grams a day um it's gonna increase fullness for you which is awesome being full is not a bad thing that's for sure oh hi hi dog um things that you should know about when it comes to fats and sugars when you're looking at an ingredient label which i will show you well i'm screenshot it maybe i'll just show it to you anyways when you're looking for fats that they're trying to hide in the ingredients label you're gonna look for beef fat, coconut oil, hydrogenated oil. Things say no saturated fat, no trans fat. Hydrogenated oil. Look in the ingredients list. Um, palm, kern oil, shortening, margarine. You'll see all those things where you're like, oh, you're hiding these. Um, another thing to pay attention to, sugar. They name it all different things to get you to think it's not in what you're eating. Because if it says sugar right away, you're going to be like, oh no, 
heads up for corn syrup, fructo fruct <laughs> fructose, uh, where was I? Sucrose, nectar, cane juice, uh, dextrose, glucose, that all means sugar. They're just trying to hide it from you. Um, refined grains, look for the word enriched, not a selfie. Um, and yeah, just don't trust the front of a label because it's not going to do you well. Let me grab some things out of my pantry and I'll show you some differences. Okay, I brought some friends to play. <laughs> I also forgot to mention when I was talking about sugars and sweetener, um, stevia, best one to go with. It is plant-based and some of the other ones are starting to come out that they're cancer causing. We're not super sure about stevia yet. There's still a lot of research being done, but we do know it's better than some of the other alternatives. So I just wanted to, this is something I've talked about on my Instagram lately, um, can of Dr. Pepper. I'll show you the label there. I will read it to you though because it's a little hard to see. The can of Dr. Pepper has 150 calories for this can. Do you even know how many blueberries that is? Um, 55 sodium, 40 grams of carbs, 40 grams, oh wait where'd those come from? The 39 grams of sugar that are in this. It's one soda. Say you take an alternative like Vivia, also made from Stevia, um, we've got zero calories, zero fat, zero carbs, zero sugar, zero anything. Taste is a little, let's say lacking. 39 grams of sugar. Zero. So that's one thing. Um, another thing I have to compare is what I have. I am back. Okay. So, two different peanut butters. I'm looking at the labels, for two tablespoons of each of these peanut butters, it is 180 calories. Actually, sorry, this one is 190, this one is 180. So, realistically, you could look at them in the store, just look at the calories and go, eh, there's not a difference. I know Skippy, like, great. Um, step four, then I look at the ingredients. Okay, so in this one, the ingredients are peanuts, egg whites, dates, coconut oil, chocolate, sea salt. I know what all those things are. Great. I look at the ingredients list on the Skippy Peanut Butter, which is reduced fat, by the way, because, you know, they want to sell it. The fat in here, their idea of reduce is uh, 12 grams of fat, whereas this one has, let's find out. Okay, so 12 as well. Um, okay, so we have roasted peanuts, corn syrup. Oh, hey, remember when corn syrup meant sugar? Second ingredient, which means the, um, the way things are shown on an ingredient label, the thing you see first is how much is the most in that product. So sugar is the second ingredient in here. Um, oh, then it says sugar. So more sugar, uh, salt, hydrogenated vegetable oil. Oh wait, that's, that's saturated fat. Great. Um, and then a bunch of things I can't pronounce. One point it says copper sulfate. Why does there need to be copper sulfate in my peanut butter? Anyways, you get my point. They may look the same. Uh, another thing to pay attention to. So let's say you're like a really big fan of these waffles, because you know I am, and my grandma thought she was being very kind when she bought me this box. Uh, I just I'm gonna read the the label here to you. For a half of a waffle, not even a whole waffle, half of a waffle. This box makes twenty half waffles, so ten full waffles. 140 calories. That means if you're eating a whole waffle, just one, that's 280. Um, you're looking at 30 grams of carbs. We're looking at seven grams of sugar. Half a waffle, by the way, so that's 14 grams. That's 60 grams of carbs in one waffle. Um, it says, here's the thing, it says it's vitamin rich. What it says? Vitamin D, calcium, iron, great. I don't know that we're outweighing the rest of the waffle here. Um, so then I look at the ingredients and it says enriched bleach flour. Remember that word enriched? Um, and then again, the second ingredient, sugar. I love you waffles, but you're not worth it. Um, and then the last thing, just to yeah, get an idea of more nutrition labels, um, what we're looking at, I have some quick roots. So when we're looking, it says um, for half a dry cup. So that's another thing weigh and measure everything because these things are not accurate. 
Um, you're looking at three grams of fat, 27 grams of carbs. So still a lot of carbs in here. Um, fiber, four grams. That's a big deal. That's 13% of your daily value of fiber. Um, and one gram of sugar. So like this kind of thing, oatmeal, better decision for you than those waffles. Anyways, I'm gonna get off my ho high horse now. Um, thank you for listening. If you're still here, like, what are you doing? You're great. I hope you learned something. If you did, comment below and tell me what you learned. Um, but welcome to my YouTube channel, I guess. Hopefully you'll find some interesting stuff here.